No, it's not disappointing because it's woke. If anything, it's not nearly woke enough. All right, there's my clickbaity uh, intro for y'all there. So here we're talking about Disney's Wish, which is the latest big Disney release um, that is supposed to be the culmination of a hundred years of Disney magic. Blah 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 blah. Uh, and right off the bat, it should be said that for the most part, I like most Disney movies that actually come out. At least the animated ones, the live action ones, and not so much. But like the animated ones usually have a lot of heart. The animations are usually always gorgeous, always good story, even though it's like sometimes like not exactly complicated. Um, and even like the worst ones they've released for the last few years have been just kind of okay. Um, I would say this is probably the worst Disney has put out in a long time. There's a lot of reasons for it. Um, and before a lot of you get in the comments with me again after the whole Marvel's fiasco, no, it's not because they made the main character black. No, it's not because it has a diverse cast, uh, 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 various races and ethnicities. Um, it's not because of any elements that you decided is woke or whatever the hell that means this week. It's disappointing because it doesn't really have much of identity of its own. Own. Um, and it, here's what I mean by that is first I, I guess let me start with things I like about this movie uh, the main character Asha I thought she was likable enough she does get more likable as the movie progresses it does feel like in the first act especially they are trying a little too hard uh, to make her seem quirky and uh, like a quirky likable which just translate to clumsy most of the time in these kind of movies uh, but once they kind of slowly drop that towards the second third act her character does become more likable and the actress who plays her uh, does a good job with her I'm gonna look it up on IMDb because I really should just pull up this page before I even start recording these things but once again we're in that stage where I have to talk about these characters names and the actresses names um, and I am blanking on what they are so I'm vamping so I can pull up the IMDb page and talk about who it is so Asha played by Ariana DeBose uh, DeBose I hope I'm pronouncing that right um she does an admirable job in the role. I think she does seem like having a lot of fun with it. The animation does look gorgeous and crisp. It looks better than it does in the trailer. Um, the 2D, 3D mix doesn't always work quite the way it should. Uh, but for the most part, it's still like it's still Disney animation. It still looks great. Um, and I, I, the way they design stuff and the way they animate stuff, I always like that style. I'm always going to like that style. Um, so like all that stuff looks good. I like that there's actually an actual honest to god. Uh, Disney villain in this movie, which because I have you've watched my last few reviews about Disney movies, you know one of my biggest complaints is I miss Disney villains. I miss the classic ones. I I want more. Um, I want more Scar. I want more Judge Frollo. I want more um, like the oh, one Princess and the Frog, uh, Professor or something. Uh, just more of the classic, just pure evil villains. And you can add complexity. You can add some back nature. Just, just make them evil. That's all I want. I don't want a redemption arc for the villain. I don't want them to see how they're actually a good guy towards the end or they're just misunderstood. No, make them evil and keep them evil. And this one actually does that. So I like that. And I thought uh, Chris Pine as, um, like, like what, what's the character's name? Like, Maj it's, it's like... Magnifico, that's what his name is, um, does an admirable job. His character is a little underwritten, not, not the character's fault necessarily, but it it's part of the larger problem this film has, and I'll get into a little bit. Um, and then one thing that does really kind of take it out of me, uh, like take me out of it, um, the songs are hit and miss. There's quite a few misses. Um, like I'm trying to pull up a list of the songs exactly so I can reference them just as they are. So like... Uh, Welcome to Rosas, which is the first opening song, is very clearly inspired by, uh, like, the Encanto, uh, like, the the first song in Encanto, and it feels very much on the same vibe. It's not a bad song. It is very much like, okay, so it's just a lesser version of what we've already seen before. Um, this Wish, which is the big solo song that has been out in all the trailers and all that stuff, gets the job done. It's still not exactly spellbounding, but, you know, Ariana DeBose still has a nice voice, so she does a good job in it. Um... The one that gets a lot of getting a lot of flag before this movie's even released, um, and I was I was hoping that it wouldn't be right because I'm I'm just getting so tired of just Disney hate discourse because it's just fucking exhausting. Even if I do agree with some of it, um, most of it's led by f bad faith arguments. Um, but this is a case where they were right, and this is the thanks I get, which is the villains on this one. Kind of sucks. Um, it's it's just it's too poppy. It doesn't. Uh, convey the menace it wants to have. It's well animated. It just doesn't convey like the the villainous es essence. It's n nothing compared to previous Disney uh, villain songs of old, um, which is disappointing because the other one that comes on later, uh, which is uh, knowing what I know now, 
um, that has a, a much cooler beat, a much more like dramatic, deep beat. And all I could think of while I was listening to it was like, man, where was this in the fucking villain song? This would have been a much better beat for that. But I digress. Um, so those are the songs I thought were good. The ones that are kind of trash were, uh, I, I check it, At All Costs isn't a bad song either. I actually kind of like that one. That's the one song I will say that I legitimately liked uh, from beginning to end. Um, but, like, yeah, this Thanks I Get kind of sucks. Uh, a Wish Worth Making, I don't even remember. Uh, there's one, I'm a Star. It's fucking awful. <laughs> Uh, that feels like it was written by committee. Um, and I think that's where I've talked about the biggest issue this movie has. And many other people smarter than me have pointed this out, and they're right, which is this movie does feel sanitized. It feels like it went through several filters. It feels like it was, they had a lot of executive oversight, and it really just went through just all this, like these rewrites and these re edits, and just really sanitized to the point where now it lacks any overall, um, identity of its own uh, and a big part of that is because it is very clearly trying to pay homage to previous Disney works um, and it's extremely obvious in how it's doing it and it is incredibly distracting every single time they do it now the occasional reference to previous Disney movies is not a bad thing I don't want to present it that way um, like I, I like movies that have references all the time like uh, God knows like I still like the first Shrek movie and that's literally the whole point is it's filled with fairy tale references um, but, the, but that finds a way to make it its own but this one almost feels self-congratulatory in how it's doing it and it's really in your face about how you're doing it. And I'll give you the perfect example. Um, so the main character of Asha has this group of seven friends. Um, now they're, they're very obviously modeled after the seven dwarves. Um, they were very obvious about this, uh, very obvious about this. And I, when I finally picked it, I was like, oh, okay, is there supposed to be the seven dwarves, I guess, or an homage to them or whatever. Um, but then the movie really hammers home that they're based on the dwarves, like every chance it gets, like lines like, Oh, poor sleepy so and so. Oh, you, you're such a doctor. I'm, I'm making that one up, but it's like, oh, you're so dopey. Or like, this is why I'm so grumpy. Just shit like that. It's like, oh, I, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, there's quite a few of that. There's a few references of Peter Pan in there that I kind of shoehorned in. Uh, there's references like the fairy godmother, and all those things make it feel like this movie was so afraid to have its own identity or had its identity stripped away from it some uh, somewhere along the production process um, that it just feels like a cut like a cookie cutter paint by the numbers fairy tale story that really does lack I hate to use this term but it's kind of true Disney magic um, it feels like it, it it lacks the proper identity that even like its worst movies over the last few years have had um, and the message it has isn't necessarily bad the overall message of the film is uh, you know go after like don't be afraid to pursue your dreams, uh, go after what you want, that kind of a thing, and you don't know if it's going to happen, but you have at least have the right to try. That being said, even that feels like it has kind of a corporate edge to it, because it does strike me as a bit ironic that uh, the message of a Disney film is like, yeah, artists, go try to be an artist. You won't try to be uh, You won't know if you'll be successful, but maybe you too can work at Disney. Now, that one's more conspiratorial. I have no idea if that's true, but it, it does strike me as a very sanitized message compared to some of their other messages uh, uh, over the past few years. Um, which is like, you know, like Zootopia talking about uh, like racism in society, like Moana even has kind of a message about uh, like not trying to push yourself too hard for other people's expectations um, or just other shit like that, where it feels like there's actually more nuanced discussion or um, even Big Hero 6 has like a message about grief and overcoming grief and learning that uh, like about like learning that causing more harm doesn't fix the harm that's been done to you. Um, stuff along those lines. Um, but this one just feels just slapdash. It feels, I don't want to say lazy, because clearly a lot of people worked really hard on this. Um, it just, it just does, it, it, this feels like something made by a lesser studio. Um, it feels like some, uh, like, it feels like Disney really should know better than this. Um, and it's not, like, awful. It's not god-awful, and I'm sure, like, kids will like it just fine. Um, but if you look at some of the original concept art and some original pitches for, like, the characters and stuff like that, you can tell some we had so much bigger ideas it had at the conception phase than it did as execution. I don't know at what point those, those elements were stripped away. Um, and... I'm not going to talk about the box office crap, because quite frankly, I'm sick to death of that discussion. I don't think it matters. It's stupid, and it's, it should not detract from whether the movie is good or not. Um, but, uh, oh, guys, we'll be right back in one second. I'm getting a phone call. 
apologies for the delay. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, uh, the box office results don't ultimately matter at the end of the day. What does matter is whether or not this movie stands up, uh, not just previous Disney movies, but as a movie on its own, and whether or not it... Um, delivers what it needs to deliver, and I feel like it just doesn't. Um, the characters, the side characters, are all feel pretty forgettable. Um, Alan Tudyk's goat character, like animal talking animal character, is pretty forgettable. The star is cute. I thought the star was perfectly fine, um, but even that feels it's very much built for at built for merchandise. Which, to be fair, all Disney is. Let's be honest. Um, but this is a case where the the writing isn't strong enough to work around that particular thing, um, like it has been in many other Disney movies. Um, so, yeah, overall, this is just a disappointing, I don't want to say mess, but just very filtered, very unoriginal, um, very forgettable um, Disney journey, which is just disappointing to see. Um, so, especially since I do, like, I do think Disney is still, whatever you will say about the company itself... There's a, like, God knows I do not support Disney as the mega conglomerate capitalistic monopoly it is. Um, but I do like its products. Uh, it's a very mixed relationship. Um, but this is definitely not what we expect from them. And, you know, like, this, like, it, it needed, it needed more ambition. It needed more, uh, excitement. It needed more something to give it its, a life of all of its own. Um, so, yeah, I think it's all we have to say about Wish. It's, it's unfortunately a very forgettable story um, that uh, I'm hoping they'll learn from and do better next time. But we'll see. I don't know at this point. Uh, so I think it's all I have for that one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one, which I'm really excited to talk about. Talk to you soon.